In this video, we will talk about the structure of uh, microfluidic chips. So that means the layers, some basic channel layouts, system components, and uh, demo kits. And uh, you will see what this demo kit means. Um, so over here is your typical full-fledged microfluidic system with some electrical uh, components installed but most importantly you have connectors the chip body itself the ceiling layer and then some electronics that uh, may or may not be there in order the interconnect layer or fluidic connections this usually would mean tubing and or the the different connectors that uh, you can use, you will see what they can be. Then the liquid handling layer, which um, is your chip body. In this case, uh, or in the case uh, that we mostly talk about, it is uh, PDMS, and uh, or it can also be plastic. And you have the the channel itself somehow edged out or or machined out, or in whatever way it is created in this block uh, of, of material. The ceiling layer is typically uh, unpatterned, and um, it can be glass, it can be a plastic film, it can even be a circuit board. And then comes your electronics layer, which uh, may or may not be there, and in, in some cases you don't need it. But uh, this is where you can put electrodes, where you can put a heater, uh, where you can put uh, an optical sensor, for instance. But uh, actually this uh, ceiling layer, let's say that this is not optional, this is necessary, but the ceiling layer can be the PCB itself. But you need the ceiling layer. So this liquid handling layer only has the negative of your channels. You need to seal the chip for it to work. How does uh, the liquid handling work? And first we talk about the connectors that uh, you can use. You need a reservoir which contains uh, your, your bulk reagents or, or, or the buffer liquid that uh, you work with. It can be, for instance, such a pressure vessel uh, where you have a, a hundred milliliter um, uh, bottle with a, with a cap where you have some connection through this cap and uh, you can you can suck the liquid up through this tube. It can also be just a beaker uh, which is open. So if you want to have a regulated pressure or you want to have a, a closed uh, system then it needs to be a closed reservoir. It can be open if it doesn't matter and uh, then you can use just a beaker. You need tubing to move the liquid uh, through your system, through the different uh, system components. Um, even if everything happens on your chip, you will likely need tubing to connect to your pumps. If everything is integrated, and there are already examples for that, then all these are collapsed into one chip. But let's talk about traditional uh, analytical setups. And uh, let's talk about what people traditionally mean under microfluidics, where you have several components connected together. So tubing, in our case and uh, in generally, or uh, generally, uh, tubing means Teflon tubes, uh, one sixteenth of an inch. But in the labs, you will use uh, silicon tubing uh, with the 3D printed chips. And you need also fittings and connectors fittings to connect between the different tube sizes or the different port uh, formats. It can be, for instance, uh, what is very commonly used, uh, inherited from uh, high-performance liquid chromatography, is this uh, threaded fittings, usually 10, 32 uh, size threaded fittings. So it's also called a screw joint. Uh, but it can also be a lure lock system which is uh, from from medical practice you can uh, connect infusion lines with uh, such a connector 
And then there are variants to this lure lock. In our lab, we use the mini lure variant, but uh, that mostly is a barbed connector, uh, the mini lure. And the standard lure lock is uh, a full size, uh, again, uh, screw joint. Then you also need a chip holder to hold your microfluidic chip and to provide uh, standardized uh, connections. Uh, this one is an example from uh, a company, Micronit, from the Netherlands. And then you also need a product collector. In the easiest case, it can just be a beaker where your uh, waste runs into, but it can also be a pressure vessel. However, in that case, uh, you need to be aware that, that degassing needs to happen somewhere. Otherwise, uh, there will be overpressure or a pressure buildup. An internal product collector can just be a, a wicking pad, so another uh, paper uh, pad for, for sucking up the liquid. Um, about the fluidic uh, component itself, and uh, close up, let's look at the connectors. So the, the screw joints, they look like this, that Teflon tube comes in, and uh, this one itself is the threaded uh, fitting that uh, you can just screw in. And you will see this in the lab. Uh, we have examples. And this one is uh, here a lateral connector. Uh, so this is a vertical connector. This one is a lateral connector. Uh, it applies a, a pressure contact between, uh, in this case, it's a glass chip and then uh, the, this lateral connector, and it has a rubber gasket to, uh, to really um, make the connection airtight. But you can also just plug in your tubes. That is uh, what our friends uh, in, in the Biology uh, Institute are doing. Um, they just plug the tubes in, and, uh, and that's it quite easy. With a PDMS, it is uh, entirely feasible. Uh, you need to just uh, puncture the, the PDMS and uh, make the hole smaller than the tube size, and then you can uh, just plug in your Teflon tube to roughly half length or half height, and then it will be a, a really good connection. Uh, so about uh, the liquid handling layer, um, what kind of channel layouts you typically have. And why I have these examples here is because we have this library uh, in 3D printed chips inside our lab. If you would like to, uh, to use it for your work, if you do your thesis with us, for instance, then you gain access to this uh, design library. So you can combine uh, a microfluidic flow path from uh, all of these, uh, these uh, cartridges that is typically how a demo kit works. But let's get back to that later. So here's a straight chip. Here's a T-chip where uh, two inputs and one output are, uh, so two inputs are combined into one output. Can also be laid out as a Y. And uh, there here is the junction and then here's the output. So you can mix two uh, liquids. Uh, this H-type chip is typically used as a reactor in uh, the exercise that we have in one of the labs, you can fill this up with uh, micro pillars, this uh, reactor, to make it a, a separator. And then also the hydrodynamic focusing type of uh, chip, where you have three inputs and one output, and uh, these three inputs are crossed in a junction. So, um, what can you do with the electronics? Well, you can regulate temperature, for instance. I will say a few more words about that uh, in another lecture. Also, you can um, use electrostatic fields to move uh, liquids on uh, electrode arrays. We will also talk about this in another lecture. And sensors, likewise, we will talk about it in another lecture. In this case, uh, this is an electrochemical type uh, of a sensor, but there are also other modalities that you can use for sensing. So what is a demo kit? A demo kit is a good and mostly affordable way to get started. If you have uh, 
some ideas or you already have a bioanalytical workflow that you would like to automate with microfluidics, then you can buy a demo kit or a starter kit, which uh, usually runs around uh, five to 10,000 uh, euros, which contains uh, one or two pumps, contains uh, a bunch of uh, connectors and fittings and, uh, and so on. And it also contains a bunch of chips. These chips are standardized, mass produced, um, usually there are different functions that you can test with these slides. Some of them are for mixing, some of them are for uh, just testing out different uh, channel gauges. And uh, some of them are even droplet generators. In any case, uh, these are usually microscope slide uh, size, so 25 by 75 millimeters. And they can be inserted into these uh, slide holders, as is shown uh, here in this example. This one is, for instance, the starter kit of Micronet, in which you also get a chip holder. So this uh, has a, a handle, which you can lift up to remove the slide inside. And you can replace it with another, and you can connect with their uh, connector format to uh, Teflon tubes. So you can uh, test your, uh, your ideas, build a proof of concept setup by combining these slides to get your channel network done. And then you can implement this uh, channel network later in an application-specific chip. That's the idea anyway. But what actually happens is, if you buy into any of these, then you will be bound to that manufacturer, because all of them have a different format. They have a different uh, chip holder, they have their different uh, interface formats, and so on. So instead of that, what we offer uh, to you as well, is uh, to use 3D printed chips, which uh, can be remade at any point in time. We have uh, our standard designs that you can use and, uh, and print in our labs. They are open source also. Uh, well, we also have our own pump, but uh, let's get back to the kit. So in a kit, you usually get uh, the pumps, the chips, the chip holders, tubing and fitting, fittings, and uh, then you can play with it almost like with Lego that uh, you can just combine the different pieces and uh, get the system that you would like. The library that we offer is 3D printed and uh, we can produce as many as needed and we can change the design anytime. We also try to use uh, standard connector formats that uh, are accessible to everyone instead of uh, making people bound by, uh, by whatever format we come up with. So. Uh, our demo kit, although it doesn't officially exist, uh, would look like something like this. Um, and this is uh, an older uh, chip holder that we, we used in our lab. Uh, since then we have advanced a little bit. But it looks like this up close, that uh, the chip is locked onto this um, uh, platform and uh, with, with these uh, uh, clamps and the tubing is connected with these minilure ports. This is a uh, flexible silicon tubing. And then we use a standard uh, syringe pump to, uh, to move the liquids. So yeah, in the lab, you're going to use uh, one of these uh, systems and uh, you're going to get access to, to this uh, chip library if you do your thesis with us. So in this uh, video about uh, the structure of, uh, of microfluidic chips, we discussed the chip layers, basic channel layouts, microfluidic system components, and uh, the, the concept of demo kits. Mm -hmm.